All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. We got the WGC St. Jude Invitational. And if you guys heard it, I said WGC, which means that this is going to be more of just a fun week. You don't take it too seriously because it's a highly volatile week. Everyone's going to have lineups that have six for six across the cut line because there isn't a cut line. So it's just going to be one of those weeks where the edge that we gain by playing cash or playing smarter, smarter than everyone else, we don't have that this week just because there's only about... 50 players that we can actually play in our DFS lineups and only about 25 of them actually have a shot at winning and we'll touch on those plays in this video but first let's go over the recaps all right so I do want to say sorry for getting this uh, video out to you guys a little bit later I had a fever for um, like Friday evening until like Monday so that kind of sucked so getting the video out to you guys a little bit later but luckily it was on kind of an off week of this WGC event which we typically do not take too seriously like I said it's it's more of a fun week just because there's no, it's not really a profitable week unless you hit big in a GPP, which you can. It's you know I have in several times, but it's not like in cash where it's just you're gonna have a successful week more times than not. Um, so we'll just play this one with the thought of it being for fun. And so with that, you can kind of play the players that you like the most and kind of just hope that they do well. Um, that's one of the things that you can do to make it fun. Uh, but let's get into last week's recap. So last week's recap, our streak ended. Um, two straight months of cashing is over. And you can see the lineup right down there below. Um, one of the things about last week's cash lineup, it was highly popular, which one tells me that it was the right correct or it was the correct players and you know I don't really regret the cash build at all sometimes you have the right plays and they just don't work out and honestly that's what last week seemed like um, especially if you look at Rory who was the most talked up most popular player to win the open last week he ended up missing the cut Adam Scott who was the most owned player in DFS he struggled to miss the cut so it was just kind of one of those weeks, or kind of just majors in general. They're highly volatile. You add in the weather in there as well. It's just going to make it more volatile. And sometimes you're going to have those weeks where you can have a decent player pool, be on the right players, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. It seems like that was it last week. I was looking back through the cash lineup, and I really don't think I would have changed it. I know I was really worried about Rafa uh, missing the cut, and he ended up missing the cut. And... That ended up sucking because then I am Scott missed the cut and then we weren't able to get five out of six across the cut line and we weren't able to cash. Overall, I wasn't too disappointed with the player pool. Could have been a little bit better um, ownership wise, but overall not too bad. Um, there was a uh, path of success there for um, people. You know, I could have moved up. You know, some people like Finau, Westwood, that would have been nice, but really not too bad. Webb Simpson, obviously, we really liked and. Matt Kuchar, those were two easy core plays, so we focused in on those guys. And one big thing later on in the week, if you guys watched the live video or yeah, the live stream, we could talk up Adam or Andrew Putnam, who was a value play of ours, <clears throat> that ended up making the cut, which was really nice. And then we also talked up Brooks just because we added in all those weather stats. It was really pouring out to us that we just had to play him, which meant that we had to get off of Rory a little bit. I ended up just 50% of my Rory lineups then became Brooks lineups, and that ended up being a really successful idea for me. All right, but let's get into this week's player pool. It's going to be a little bit quicker version just because we don't have to get into too much detail um, for the WGC events. All right, so getting to the picks for this week, I do think if you want to play players on the top end, um, they're all going to be great plays for you this week. Brooks, T30, T37, T2, and a T4 in four years playing at um, the St. Jude Classic, which is a full tournament field event that was played here before it became a WGC event. So not bad course history. Dustin Johnson won it last year, and he also had a fifth place finish in 2016. But I think I like Roy the most if we're going to pay up for our players. Um, he did miss a cut earlier this year and then he followed that up with a victory in his event right after his missed cut so that's one of the reasons why i like uh, rory but honestly those three are going to be great plays justin thomas has been in some really good form i do think we're going to be paying up for him a little bit too much so i'm going to be sticking away from him john rom in some tremendous form as well if he's going to continue to drive the ball better than he typically does i think he's going to be a great play timely fleetwood's still a great play that's the problem these guys are all great plays 
So I think I'd just rather pay down for these guys that are just slightly better options than the AK range. Um, so I, like Justin Rose, I think he's due to have a big week. Um, probably a top five finish. I'm not sure if he's going to go out and win, so I won't mind him as a play. But I still really like Xander Schauffele, who had a T52 finish here in 2017, which isn't the greatest, but he's still one of the better staff hits in the field. And we are going to be looking at fantasy points scored a little bit because it is a WGC event, so it matters slightly because they're going to be occurring points throughout the whole um, weekend rather than just maybe two uh, days. He is top 10 in that. Henrik Stenson has been playing some great golf. Um, he's first in strokes game putting now and fifth in driving accuracy, so I think we can roll with him if you want to. Uh, Matt Kuchar, I'm just going to continue to play him. I'm not sure why they keep underpricing him. Um, still the best staff in the field. Still top five in fantasy points scored um, in the field this week, so I just I don't get the price on Matt Kuchar. I'm just going to plug and play him. Uh, Tony Finau, I like how his game's coming around now. He did have a miscut here um, at this course last year. But typically he plays well in WGC events, so I do like Tony Finau. Um, like I said, last two events have been really nice, and I do think his game's coming around. Um, so if you want to roll with Tony Finau, I won't blame you at all. Um, he seems like a good GPP play. I'm not sure how many people actually be rolling with him, um, especially given the price increase um, from last week. But I, I, I was just kind of curious to see what his ownership will be. I'm a little bit surprised Webb Simpson is this cheap. He's one of the better staff that's in the field as well. Um, his greens and regulation is kind of worrying me a little bit, but other than that, he seems like a solid fit. Um, the only problem with him is I don't know how much upset we're going to get off him this week. I'm projecting him to have a top 25 finish, which won't kill you. It'll help you cash, but probably won't help you win a GPP. Uh, Paul Casey, once again, decent staff hit. We know that with him. Great ball striker, great total driver, great in stroke scan total. If his putter is coming around slightly, um, he's going to be a good play, but he's just more of a GPP play. Patrick Reed's game continues to come around, so we continue to bring him up pretty much. That's how that goes. Um, if you want to play him at this price point, I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, he does seem decent. A pivot play if Patrick Reed is going to be popular, though. I think we can roll with uh, Tyrell Hatton. I'm a little bit cheaper there. He's bomber that you know can go on and produce, but I'm a little bit worried um, for him. Uh, this week. Chaz Reavy, um, he has decent course history, T6 and a T4 and a T12 in three years playing this course, so I think he'll be popular because of that. He is a really good staff at as well, so if you find a way to play him in your builds, not going to blame you. Andrew Putnam, I do like as well. He had a second finish here last year, and he's just in some really good form. we kind of been playing him. I think it was the last two events it was in the Euro. Um, I think I played him I'd have to double check that, but I know I played him last week, so he's someone that um, I just like the price point of him, um, like the recent form of him. I just I don't know how popular he will be this week, so that's kind of why I'm rolling with him. Uh, Danny Willett's game is kind of it seems like it's coming around quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure how much his game typically it doesn't translate well on English soil, but um, obviously he has had success over here as well. Uh, Matthew Wolf, I do think he'll be popular uh, just because he's kind of the new kid on the block. He had that victory two events ago, then kind of had a let up um, at the John Deere Classic, but that kind of just happens with people that win events that are not as focused the next event. So this is going to be his first WGC event. So I think he's going to re really try to show these guys what he has. Uh, Kevin Kisner, I actually do like, I think he's going to be a sneaky play. It seems like his game's starting to trend um, in the right direction. He played well at a course that really shouldn't have fit his style of play too much. Um, we don't typically see uh, Kevin Kisner play well in that style of course with those weather conditions. So I do like Kevin Kisner. Uh, Jim Ferrick, good staff fit. Only a decent GPP play. <clears throat> Sorry, still a little sick. A little bit sick still, but getting over it. All right, so Keith Mitchell, kind of just a bomber. I don't like this play, but if we're trying to find value plays, maybe you think about it. I'd rather just roll with Nate Lashley, um, I guess. Um, Nate Lashley, we know, is at least a good stat fit. He finished T37 here at this event last year, and he's actually um, a top 20 stat fit in the field, which really is surprising. That's just because he has played at easier courses, whereas most of the players in this um, event have played at tougher courses. 
But that's kind of just the player pool that we're looking at. It's really trimmed down this week. It's kind of, you know, make it how you guys want it to be this week. It's kind of a straightforward video for this week. Um, but that's all we have for you. Maybe we'll go live, but I don't think we'll need to this week just because it, it's a WGC, WGC event. Kind of just like to take it easier and relax. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. Please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.